Everybody, it's him and Lon, and it is Vlogmas Day 11. Dun, 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 it's lit. Dun, 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 we are 11 dun, dun. days in. We are so excited to be filming this video for you guys today. So, hopefully, everybody has caught up on all of our previous episodes. Like and comment down below if you have been enjoying Vlogmas 2018. Yeah, so today we decided to do something a little bit different for you guys. We asked you to ask us whatever you wanted on our Instagram and on the YouTube community post. And you guys sent in a lot of yeah, good questions. Y'all sent in a lot of questions. Like, we already took a peek at them and we are just like really excited to answer them. Shameless I'm excited. plug, we are using our new equipment, so. Oh, yeah. I'm super hype about that. Yeah, so make sure you shout out Henry in the comments if you're liking our new setup because my baby is behind this entire thing so let's go ahead and get started so because <laughs> let's go ahead and get started because it's a ton of questions and we want to answer them all yeah. so bucola i hope that's how i pronounce your name is that bucola mm -hmm. she said hello hen and lawn i love you guys my questions are for lawn are you a full-time youtuber what did you study in college and why are you not working who taught you how to cook? Love and peace. Stay blessed. Love from Maryland. Dang, shout whole government. <laughs> I know, Bacola. <laughs> well, thank you so much for asking these questions. And shout out to being from Maryland. That's exactly. what's up. Exactly. That's where so, it is. I know. So let me just answer um, the questions that you have. Am I a full-time YouTuber? I guess I would consider myself a full-time YouTuber because that's, you know, that's my full-time job at the moment. Um, so, yeah, if you want to call me that. Um, what did you study in college and why are you not <laughs> working? So I studied childhood and adolescent studies which is essentially kind of like child development when I was in school so my um, major I learned a lot about child psychology sociology um, education um, child development so many different areas of um, of like basically child development in general um, went into my major did you enjoy that I really like child development it was cool um yeah it was cool why are you not doing it now because I don't like kids. <laughs> it's like, no, let me stop. I, I really don't like children, which is really sad. I don't she like... She likes children, y'all. She just has a small, has a short fuse a short... when it comes with patience with kids. <laughs> Not a short fuse. Yeah, you got a short fuse because all it takes is a little... For her to be, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. That's how you so, be. So, okay, to correct that. No I do not either. like working with children, but I like working for children. So, for example, Explain that. I'm, I, my career has been working in human resources for the public school system for the last three years. So, in my role, I'm working for the children, you know, but I, <laughs> I can't be a teacher. You know, I can't be that hands-on with the kids. Uh, like why am I short. not working? So I'm not working basically because of this one here. Um, we <laughs> we were from we're from Maryland. We moved to New Jersey last year for Henry's job, and then just a few months ago, what was that like August? Mm -hmm. um, he got another job offer with Amazon, his current employer here in Maryland, which re relocated us back to Maryland. So I've been trying to basically find a job in. That's what's making me why I call myself a temporary stay-at-home wife. And um, just a little tidbit, guys. I actually have been offered employment, but we got some things that we need to work out with that first. So yeah, I, I got an offer, but um, I'm just but I just haven't started let's, yet. Let's be honest, though. Let's be honest. I like long being. I mean, he does. I, I I'm work I work kind of everywhere, but I like the dynamic of he's so Lawn not being stressed out. Because if she's stressed, then I'm stressed, right? And I like that. I like the the family dynamic that yeah. it provides when coming home. So, true. I mean, if she want to work, she can work. But we yeah. kind of talked about that, so yeah. it is what it is. Um, who taught you how to cook? I touched on this before. Um, me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She didn't if know. Henry taught she... me how to cook. But here's the thing: when I be giving them special recipes, she be like. Woo. Special recipes for what? See, she do this. And then I cook. And then I cook. She did this for Valentine's Day last year. And then I cook. Go look at the Valentine's Day. You know what? I'm not even going to get into that. And when I cook, she'd be like, oh my gosh, so bomb. Dang, give your boy props. 
Who taught me how to cook? I would really attribute my cooking skills to Food Network, honestly, um, because when I was younger and my parents, my siblings can attest to this, I love watching Food Network. My sisters and I would like literally fight over the remote because I wanted to watch things like Emeril Lagasse and Rachel Ray, Ina Garden, Bear, um, not Barefoot Contested, that is Ina Garden. King of the um, Hill, Simpsons. No, not King of the Hill. And um, what's her name? Jada, Jada De Laurentiis. I watch them all the time and that's kind of where I got like my like I guess like the full vocabulary from and techniques and things of that nature is that everything she said yes that's all Bacola said so I hope I was able to answer your questions to the fullest extent Bacola all right next up is from Gina H by both of you being a young cup well first of all she said first I love you guys thanks so much Gina we love you too <laughs> she said here's my question by you both being a young couple how do you maintain a healthy and christ-centered marriage despite how the world views marriage and also the negative influence influences from outsiders also could you give some singles who desire marriage some encouragement thanks okay so, so I'll first start part, off on yeah this one. let me start how do you maintain a healthy and cent christ-centered marriage despite how the world views marriage and also the negative influences from outsiders That's so the first lot. thing i'm gonna tell you to do is limit who you talk about your relationship to. Yeah. Right? You shouldn't be talking to really to anybody about your relationship. Keep that between you two and God, mm -hmm. right? So if you don't have a personal relationship with God, develop it through prayer, you know, go to church, meet um other meet, Christians. Yep, yeah, other Christian people. Um Maybe but mentors. Yeah. But you got to keep that in the mix with yourself and your significant other because when things go wrong, they go wrong, right? Yeah. And outside people can't see past yep. what you tell them. The perception. Not that not that we're putting on a mask, but you they can't you can't penetrate our relationship. So when you're asking about like having outsiders, there are no outsiders in our marriage because we you know, it's only it's only us. You get you're getting what we're giving you, so there's no way that you would be able to get in this, get up in here, you know? And then if you do have to talk about something to somebody, find somebody that's going to encourage you True. to be better and, and support your relationship, not somebody that's going to give you a way out yeah. of escape of, yeah. oh, no, nah, you just need to just do bye, bye, bye. You ever, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry for cutting you off. No, it's okay. I'm used to it. I was just going to say, you ever talk to somebody about your problems out of frustration, and then the minute they start going in on whomever you're talking about or the situation, you're like, yo, why did I even talk to this? Like, what it's was like the It's like you point? released them. Like, they wanted you to come talk so they can give their two cents. Not even that. I'm saying, like, you automatically, like, you yourself, you start to regret even bringing it up because it's just like, you, you just can't get those moments back. So even though you have times of frustration and stuff like that, you could just write it down. If you have a diary, write it out. If it's really bad, you say a little prayer and just hope, you know, ask God for forgiveness or ask God to work on your heart. You know, if it's something that you're um, going through to work on your heart or work on your partner to help see each other's point of view and then come back to that. Because here's a big key, right? When you're in the midst of a situation, you're frustrated, right? Mm -hmm. You're emotional. Mm -hmm. So when you're explaining that situation, you're explaining it at the height of your anger, right. right? And when a person is receiving that communication, they don't know where you are. All they know is what they've heard, right? So if I'm hearing somebody angered, emotional, right? I would, I, my, my mind is going to jump automatically to, oh, this is a crazy person. This is yeah. a crazy situation. And so then imagine. when you move mm -hmm. past it, because mm -hmm. you know that you've over-exaggerated the situation, or you may <laughs> not have over-exaggerated, but you just communicated it out. Now it's like you got to backtrack and now you're trying to save face to people who don't even shouldn't even Have be in involved in your business in the first place. Yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of reasons why a lot of relationships break up is not because they didn't move forward, but it's because you got so many people in your business giving you their two cents on what they did and how they did it and how it didn't work for them. And now you have made a, your mind that hey, this is an issue. Blah, blah, blah. So keeping them within the family. Yeah. The two and God. That's yep. what I said. Um, also, could you give some singles who desire marriage some encouragement? I would say, and everybody's situation is different, but I would say, um, don't, even though marriage is something that you desire, we all have goals and aspirations, you know, you want to get married, you want to have kids, you want to settle down and stuff like that. Um, don't like hunt for it so much. Don't, don't let that be the one thing that's on the front of your mind. I feel like when God 
feels like that you are ready to meet your soulmate, he will elevate you to that place or bring that person into your life. I feel like when you when you're constantly think of it, you start to do a little bit too much. You know, you start to be too conscious of every little thing. Just don't think about it. You know, date yourself. Have fun with yourself. And the you know, when you least expect it, then God will send you who it is that he wants you to be with. And not only that, but evaluate who's in your circle right so you want people around you that's going to be continuously helping you to be better yeah and as you become better right you become more mature you become more wise then different people will begin to attract to you right so think about that think about who's in your circle are they lifting you up are they holding you back if you can't go to none of the people in your circle for advice you need to evaluate that because that's also going to help you get to the place where you're ready to be connected with someone else. Mm -hmm. And I will say, um, like our parents used to say, birds of a feather flock together. And we wasn't trying to hear that back in the day. But honestly, your 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 circle is a direct reflection of who you are. From an outside perspective looking in, why would I, you know, if you're hanging out with thieves, but you the one person in the group that's not a thief, but the other three people in your group are thieves, why would I assume that you're not a thief? You hanging with thieves, you know what I'm saying? So I say that to say that um, like men, they're gonna be attracted to what they see. So if you're hanging out with a bunch of thieves, they're gonna assume that that's what you are. Thoughts. <laughs> Thoughts? Yeah, whatever you wanna call it. They're gonna assume that that's what you are. Not to say that you have to get rid of your friends because your friends are your friends and you are yourself, but it's just like, you know, it all, it all, I feel like it all comes into play. What are you doing? <laughs> I can't. All right, moving on to our Instagram questions. So, Shell's we weight. We won't be able to get to all of them, but we're going. Yeah, because it couple. was actually a lot. Um, Shell's weight goal 175 said, Are you enjoying being a stay at home wife? Financially, is it hurting home? Shell's, <laughs> y'all have been out of business. Shell's, like, no, I'm joking. Um, I, I mean, I enjoy being a stay at home wife. I feel like it's, it's not all that it's cracked up to be. Um, after being home, let me see, it's <laughs> August, I mean, September, October, November, December, been home for four months now, and, you know, it's a little boring, you know, it, they have, <laughs> there are my boring days, like, somebody asked me the other day, how many days out of the week would you really say that you're, like, dead bored, and I said probably just, like, one out of seven, it's just really? not, yeah, I'm not bored, you I mean, you always I, telling me you bored, I mean, bored, because Henry be working, I just be want to be all up on him sometimes, but, I still be doing other stuff and I will say and I told my family this that if we weren't doing YouTube I definitely wouldn't be able to survive as a stay-at-home wife for as long as I have being though we do YouTube that gives me something to do YouTube is my job I'm constantly editing videos we're constantly making videos it's a I mean especially doing vlogmas right now I'm it's it's a turnaround even when we weren't doing vlogmas there was a cooking with lawn to be filmed there was a clean with me to be filmed there were vlogs that need to go up on sundays you know what i'm saying so um and it's Lon pretty is in busy full control of all the editing and all of that stuff so she she's the yeah execution director. <laughs> not the execute i always making up these daggone titles but yeah i just feel like um i'm glad that i have youtube to keep you occupied yeah to keep me occupied because i girl, i would not be able to last if we if i wasn't doing nothing all day at home and the second part of the question is financially is it hurting home no no uh fave okay the kiki the kiki the kiki the kiki 06 said favorite tradition you brought to your marriage from your family you go first tradition. i know i'm trying to think of a tradition as well we have traditions, but I want to say a quote unquote tradition. tradition. Well, I mean, the only tradition, okay. I guess, it's not really a tradition that I bought, but that a tradition that my family had that long kind of got to experience this year yeah. was my mother loves to go to Pennsylvania to shop. Is that really a tradition? That is a tradition. That's been happening ever since I've been born. Okay. Every year, all the time. That's and you finally got to experience the shopping experience in Pennsylvania. I would say the only other tradition that we used to have that kind of stopped was going to New York every year. We used to go three or four times a year. Well, they're asking you what traditions did you bring it to this marriage? I know. The I've only never tradition, been to you. The only tradition that so I brought stop. to this marriage, I would say, is. Um, <laughs> mm. if, if you don't have one, that's okay. But you keep making up stuff. <laughs> it's hilarious to me. What tradition Why did you bring? Why are you making stuff I don't up? Know. Those are traditions, though. Where's tradition? 
while Henry may or may not be thinking about his tradition, I don't really have a tradition per se. If you don't but have I don't, tradition, but no, I do you like, about, so man. listen, it's because when I think of a tradition, I think of like one single event, but I do like like incorporating my crazy family into Henry's non crazy ways. So, what I mean by that, she is, don't know me, I'm just as crazy as her family, but you are not used to that because your family is not that rambunctious on holidays, they can be. Like, we just don't play games. We play spades, but we don't play. So my family is really crazy. So I like on holidays when Henry gets to experience that because Shalonda I mean, is I crazy. Wanna, I, I experience it every day. It be Shal if y'all go back to the video, Shalonda is is the loudest, <laughs> just as loud We're as all anybody loud. else. I just kind of like him having that like turned up. I mean, like turned up holiday vibe. He's definitely not used to that. It was an experience. I mean, when he came it over. is. I'm used to maybe a seven, but definitely a ten with Shalonda's family. <laughs> definitely a ten, but it's cool. I'm I'm with it. And I would say maybe Different. like, I mean, do you really play with us? Like Uno is like a tra like playing Uno for no. money. Yeah, you never. I don't like playing. Uno. <laughs> I think Uno is too easy of a game, but I play it because Lon loves Uno. Yeah, we don't even have no traditions, y'all. This is sad. We're gonna make some traditions. I mean, not us. We have our own traditions, but I'm saying we don't really have any in our. I wouldn't say anything like a tradition. Mm. We don't have any traditions. But we're gonna make some. What else we got? All right. On to the next one. Um, Miss Blue Two Seven Eight said, "What things are you looking forward to doing next year? Would there be any changes?" We don't know. Is that referring to YouTube? Yeah, I'm not or sure. Or is what that she referring means. to life? Because it's a lot I'm planning on doing like, next year. Yeah. Go ahead. Want to see the world? Um, but in regards to YouTube, so we got a lot of things playing. Can't disclose it to you, of course. That would defeat the purpose of uh, the planning piece. But, but I did tell them we'll, we'll probably make a video like either at the end of Vlogmas or like early next year to let them know what we. Oh yeah, for. but just know it's gonna be lit. Yeah. You know, a creative director, um, producer extraordinaire is coming up <laughs> with something especially for the people. Um, in the HL fam, and it's going to be lit. It's um, definitely going to be a different uh, style than what we are normally used to doing. So, so what things are you looking forward to doing next year? Next year, I'm looking forward to traveling. I think I think we have a I think we're going to be going out of the country a couple of times next year. Um, I think we have a group trip that's going to take place next year. Uh, we got Lon's birthday trip coming up. Yeah. So it's a lot. Dang, it's a lot. Next year. It's a lot going on next year it's a yeah. lot going on what you what you looking forward to i am definitely looking forward to traveling as always can't wait to see new places taste new food oh my gosh can't wait um i feel like what else do i want to do next year yeah celebrate another birthday um i'm getting old i'm gonna be old i year. know this is like kind of <laughs> scary jesus my heart y'all i'm gonna be 27 in a few weeks mm. That's scary to me. So thinking about that, I don't know, might pop out a kid or two, you know. I'm going to be 28. <laughs> Harry's going to be 28. Woo. You, you never know. Y'all just wait on that. Y'all know. Y'all might, might, might see a little Hank, you know what I'm saying? Not a little Hank. A little Hank, a little Lon Lon, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so the question comes from uh, Looks like Brooklyn. Brooke Lynn, J. New Jersey. I don't know if that's what that means. NJ? No, but. Oh, the, Brooklyn J. Brooklyn J. The heck? Did y'all grow up with similar backgrounds? Go ahead. No, we didn't. Um, I feel like for I was the a most, good kid. yeah, I feel like for the most part we were good kids, but we definitely didn't grow up with similar backgrounds, and you can kind of see that. And that's another thing about being married; you can definitely see how a person was raised when you're dating someone because you notice how different you guys are. Um, I don't know, my fam. I mean, but. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like my family is a little bit, not my family, but I have, uh, my family was less strict. I feel like Henry's family was a little bit more strict. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's um, right. Strict by the word. <laughs> Stick by the word. My mother didn't play. So I, I went to, if y'all don't know, I went to a private school for kindergarten through 12th grade. A private grade. Christian school. Private Christian school. So every day I was fed the word. Every day, um, the rules... So you could, couldn't do a lot of the things that going to public school you could do. Um, there was always rules and regulations. But for me, growing up, my mindset was always, how do I be the best in whatever I do? How do I understand from a business perspective? And how do I network to get to where I need to be? So that was always my focus, learning from my mother and my father. Both of them are um, very 
entrepreneurish when it comes to um, creating business and starting new things. So and are your parents to, together? My parents are not together. I just wanted to plug that just so we could talk about our, you know, your whole so background. Parents, How parents, did you grow up? Are your parents separated. married? Are they divorced? Um, What's going on? My mother's remarried to uh, my stepfather, Mr. Uh, Mr. R.J. Rupert. I call him Mr. Ralph. Um, but yeah, so I, I was the only dude guy as well. Um, with my older sisters, I was the youngest. So the dynamic for me was very different mm -hmm. because I always felt like being as though I was the youngest, I one had to protect my sisters, but two, I needed to be, I gotta be, I gotta be the best. I'm coming from the back. I gotta be able to compete with those who have come before me. And that's always been the way I've looked at, not just, uh, with my friends, with everybody. If you were older than me, that's I'm going. I'm coming after you. Like I wanna, I wanna compete and get to that level of where you are. So for me, so, that's what it was. So if you ask people like how you were like in school, what you know, how would people describe you? Oh, I was. Uh, like we asked your classmates. I was a class clown. I was a class clown. Oh, you were. I was a class clown. What a clown. Um, I was very smart though. I knew my stuff, so if you ask them that, I mean, I was a salutatorian for my uh, class, but I was I was educated. I, I knew how I knew how to balance school and fun. I was a little nerdy back then, I guess you would call it. But then I grew into um, my swag. I can't. You feel me? I, I grew into my swag. But I'm glad. Like, I'm glad for all of the steps that I took. I mean, I worked at Chick-fil-A and all of that. I learned how to be respectful there. And um, going away to college, I think, was a great door opener for me to just step away and be like, okay, come into your own mm -hmm. um, and separate from some of those uh, things. But, yeah. I mean, my parent, our, our mother was, was, I wouldn't say she was strict. Not with me. She was more strict with my sisters. With me, I, I was I, I could finesse and really do whatever because I was the baby. So me growing up, okay, so I grew up with two younger sisters. So I was, you know, I was the older sister. I do have an older brother, um, but my parents, they both had two sons prior to them getting married. They got married when I was like in third grade. Um, and so we all grew, you know, my brothers actually stayed with their parents or their, my whatever my one brother stayed with his uh, his dad and then my other brother stayed with his mom um but me and my sisters we all um grew up together it was chill i mean as you could expect growing up with three girls in the house lots of fights lots of arguing lots of people wearing each other clothes to school and not knowing oh my gosh that was that was, that was the craziest part how do you feel when you go to school and you and your sister left the same house and you go and pass her in the hallway and she's wearing the clothes but that's neither here nor there I think, I think if people, Sharing is I think if people, if you ask like my classmates how I was, probably had the people wouldn't even know who I am because I was so quiet. I was completely to myself. I had, you know, in middle school and high school, I had like three friends and I hung out with them. I definitely wasn't the type to make friends outside of my friends and I'm still not that way, which is, and I'm pretty sure Henry can attest to that. I did not go around making friends. Which is probably bad, but whatever. So, whatever. So, I um, I just kind of stayed to myself. Very quiet, very reserved, very shy. But I was, um, I was, I always got good grades. 100%. And Harry don't believe me when I be saying that sometimes. But I really did always get good grades. Um, my mom never really made us study or anything like that. I guess I never had to because I got good grades regardless, but that really took a toll on me when I got to college. <laughs> oh my gosh. Game changer. <laughs> not, try, not studying K through 12 and then going to college and trying to like turn on the switch and study work. definitely doesn't work out that way. Um, but yeah, any other questions? Am I missing anything? When y'all first started YouTube, was it discouraging as far as views, watch times? That's from... That's from Brooklyn J as well. Oh. Okay, yeah, she asked us a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> she did. Um, hey, Brooklyn J. So I started our YouTube channel just me by myself, and I feel like it wasn't really discouraging because it's like if I have 100 subscribers, how many views do I really expect to get? Do you get more anxious and do you want your channel to grow faster? Yeah, but I wouldn't say I was discouraged because it's just like how many views can you get off of a little bit of 
I also don't think you were that pressed when you first started. Yeah. You was, but then you wasn't. Right. It was just like, oh, let me see what it is. I feel like you're more humble, if anything, because it's like, oh my gosh, a hundred people in this world want to watch me. Oh yeah, my that goodness. is what she was saying. 15, she would say stuff just like yeah, that. Yeah, Henry, oh my gosh, a hundred people in this world want to watch that's me. That's not my voice. That's not exactly what you just said. But that's not my voice. You're going to put on that fake voice. I just copied your voice. Anyway. Um, so yeah, it's just like more like a, a humbling experience. I don't think it was discouraging. Now because we have more of a pool of subscribers, you know, um, we're almost gearing up towards thirty thousand subscribers. It's slightly discouraging when you put a lot of work and creativity into your videos and they don't do as well as you expect them to do. But sometimes I just kind of chuck it up as whatever is YouTube. Some videos take off and you literally have no clue why. And then some videos do horrible and you're just like, okay, wait, I thought everybody wanted to see that. So there's no real science to it. So you really can't, you can't beat yourself up over it too much. I don't get discouraged. Yeah. Um, because... I look, I look at trends, so I'm tracking where we were to where we are in right. the time frame. And so, so if you look at that, if you look at, just say this year, we went from January 2,000 subscribers to December 25,000. That's a big come up. So what I've learned um, from my mentors and peers is that consistency is key. You stay consistent and you'll watch it and just watch it grow. Mm -hmm. um, that's the hard part, though. Um, so for us, I don't think it's discouraging. I think it's motivating for us. Yeah, definitely we take motivating. it as a challenge. Okay, how do we get better the next time um, and keep growing and pushing and staying consistent? Dream GG said, how do y'all decide on what to get one another for excellence? We I get everything. We just kind of set <laughs> a budget and go, go from over, there. We go over the budget. So, so that's a good question because this year we're actually doing something different. Mm -hmm. We're actually not going to get any gifts. Mm -hmm this year i'm gonna reflect on what christmas is really about and mm -hmm. really uh reprioritize you know oftentimes we we lose the focus of what christmas truly is mm -hmm. about um the birth of jesus mm -hmm. um and so we want to refocus on that and realize i mean that okay we can we, get gifts yeah. all throughout the year exactly like, let's take this time to really reflect and be grateful and thank yeah so. yeah and honestly it's just I mean, when I think about it, it's kind of just like Thanksgiving. I love, um, we're hosting Christmas this year, so our family's coming over to our house, and it's just, that's going to be, like, our gift, I would say. Just, like, being around our family, having a good time, and just really creating memories. And, I mean, gifts are cool. My birthday in a few weeks, so he better know that we're not, we not exchanging Christmas gifts. <laughs> I'm expecting birthday gifts. But it's just, exchange of what? Birthday gifts. What are you talking about? Your birthday in May. I know. What can we exchange on yours? It's, no. about, it's about gift to yeah, giving. No. I, I really feel, just a side note, I feel bad for every kid out there whose birthday is next to Christmas because y'all cannot, you get, y you cannot play twice us. The, twice the Y'all cannot play us for our birthday just because our birthday is close to Christmas. I don't care if my birthday is on Christmas Day, Christmas Eve. Would you get somebody in whose birthday is in June a birthday gift? Yes, you would. So I expect I'm a birthday give gift you too. A birthday gift and a Christmas gift. No, Two I gifts. know that. No, I know that. But I'm just saying for people, like, don't play the kids. Don't play the adults. Like, no, that's all, petty. It's all one day. No, it's not all one day. Christmas is Christmas and my birthday is my birthday. You should have told your parents had you on another day. No. Yeah. No. When will Hen and Lon do a duet for the family? Not for the family. Steph. Fabulous. Steph the fabulous. fabulous. We can give you one right now. Hey, Wait, give him something. No. Huh? Give him something. What you got? I don't have nothing to give. Um, let me think. I have nothing let me to think. Give. Let me think. Lon, Lon likes songs. Rick won't like, have me out here sounding um, crazy. I cannot. <clears throat> What's your song? What's Baby, your song I don't know. All the time? That. I bust the windows out your car. This yes. is awkward. No, I'm not don't doing even look that. Don't look at the camera. No, it's all these daggone lights. People <laughs> say don't look at the camera. He brought me through hard trials. I know you know that, John. <laughs> I know a mom, but I don't want to sing. Right, hold on, I got one more question. Lisa Dukes just called me in before we wrap this up. Lisa Dukes, she said, how many years will it be until you have children? Lisa, how many years? I mean, how many years? We could be pregnant right now. Say